All right. This week's episode is sponsored by Common Sense. Given the fact that we're in the middle of a pandemic, Ben and I are recording remotely. Please practice social distancing and wear a mask in populated public spaces. Thank you. Now on to this week's topics. Hello, guys, and welcome to Gears and Grades, the student-driven podcast. I am your host, Jeremy Honus, alongside my co-host, Ben Bell, with a special guest. His name is Lucas. Guys, say hello. How's it going? Hey, hey Lucas, how are you doing today? Thanks for having. Hey. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much for uh, for uh, taking part in this uh, little uh, little podcast that. Uh, talks about cars and stuff like that i'm I'm sure you'll fit in just nicely you have some nice stories to share with us and uh Mm -hmm. you know of course um we're we're very much looking forward to it so uh, i guess without further ado we'll probably jump right into our this week's topics and then we'll we'll, if you have anything to add on please feel free to jump right in and uh uh, say your piece so um i guess without further ado uh we can talk a little bit about uh the raptor r we did discuss this a little bit last week uh we were given a teaser by the um goodness uh by ford ceo um it was a very neat little teaser now the uh pictures are officially out this thing's looking pretty sharp uh lucas uh ben uh looking pretty good have you guys seen it uh yes i've uh taken a look at the vehicle uh saw it when it first uh I guess, um, kind of premiered through, you know, the, the Twitter sphere, motor trends, articles, things like that, uh, actually just pulling up, uh, screenshots of it now, but, um, yeah, you know, I was a little, I think Jeremy and me were talking about last week, but it was a little mixed on the, the new F one fifties when they first came out, but, uh, as I've been seeing them on the road, they've been growing on me. And, uh, I really think they knocked it out of the park again with this, uh, next, next generation Raptor. I mean, you know, keeps the heritage of the older ones, but, uh, Still has some, you know, newer advancements. Uh, rumors of the Raptor, you know, are next year coming with a V8 engine, which I think is long overdue. That's the thing people miss the most about the the second gens. Um, yeah, pretty sharp looking. Uh, what do you think about it, Lucas? I mean, I'm not a fan of Ra- a Ford, but you know, I like the Raptor, Ford F150. It's, a, it's okay car, but yeah, I am again new cars. You know, not not my uh, favorite cars right now, but. I don't know. It's a decent looking pickup. Better yeah, than yeah, uh, the some of their other pickups they have. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, usually when new cars come out, it's usually hit or miss with the design. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, I totally understand where you're coming from. I mean, with it took me a while to get used to the, the F-150 styling, the new one especially. I was more a fan of the 09 to 10 uh, F-150s. But, uh, you know, this one's starting to grow on me a little bit. I can understand why uh, you not being a Ford guy, you probably wouldn't take to this one very much uh are you uh more of a ram rebel uh trx guy to be honest uh, i think the dodges are pretty 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 nice pretty nice pretty nice yeah yeah cool. well this one's starting to create some competition uh towards uh dodge and chrysler so we'll see how it goes i mean the v6 is a little iffy because they're offering a v6 with this one but uh i'm sure they're gonna i don't know we'll see yeah, the three five eco boost is back. The the ten speeds back um, for the regular Raptors. Uh, it's nice for sure with the Rams that they brought the competition with the T Rex now. That kind of required Ford to bring back the V eight. Um, I know we were having a bit of a discussion there before we started recording, but uh, it'll be interesting to see which V eight Ford chooses to bring. I'm hoping they go right for the seven hundred horsepower variations of like a GT five hundred engine, just so they can compete with the T Rex properly. Uh, hopefully, it's not just you know like a Coyote or something kind of generic they throw in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think as far as uh, the truck world goes, uh, looking through press images, I think the new interior is pretty nice, especially if you get into oh, that yeah. upper class model with like the kind of Recaro sport bucket type seats and stuff. Is as far as pickup trucks go, you know, it's um, pretty. Solid, if I need yeah. something to tow like the the race cars, you know, these are pretty cool. They can also <laughs> off road at the same time um you know bringing a lot of the old raptor stuff over the fact that it can fit factory 37s on now is pretty funny i know in the truck world that's pretty obnoxious especially for a half ton um and then yeah just moving to the newer the newer ford interior the newer just you know newer variation of the raptor it's an easy business model for them so kind of nice to see them continuing yeah you know what a uh, great solid job with the redesign love it uh, love the interior um yeah this is definitely a truck you'd take to grid life yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's uh, kind of perfect for things like uh, for things like that. Any sort of off roading, you know, trail stuff. Uh, new purpose built rear suspension too. I know it was a big deal. They were touting in like the press stuff. I don't know how much difference that'll really make, but uh, 
Yeah. I know at least there are some kind of teaser images coming out uh, with mm -hmm. them doing air jumps and stuff uh, in like kind of early presser images. And it does seem like the truck is going to be pretty capable again. There's, oh. you know, plenty of YouTube videos already of the older Raptors just decimating off-road courses or doing ridiculous jumps that they shouldn't be surviving. So hopefully <laughs> this truck continues to be more of the same with that. I think you can get away with playing the video. It's just a short Instagram video. Yeah, it should be all right to show. It's yeah, pretty, uh, check this out. No sound either. So you can see the the Raptor camera truck rolling with it too. It's uh, yeah, absolutely insane. More. Wow. Yeah, nice nice soft sand dune jump too. So that probably wasn't too bad for the suspension. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Definitely will be nice to see, uh, particularly excited for once this thing has the, the V8 available and for sale. That's when I'm really going to be interested to see what happens with that truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I guess sort of speaking uh, about trucks, you know, uh, Nissan released their uh, new Frontier. Uh, the design um, is, wow, kind of inspired. Uh, I definitely see uh, GMC Canyon and uh, F-150 in the rear. Canyon more in the cab, uh, F-150 in the rear. It's a solid design. Um I'm not angry about it. Um, I mean, it's definitely new for Nissan. It's a new direction for Nissan. I actually don't mind it. Uh, I mean, I guess if you pull up the page, uh, Lucas can have a nice little look at it and uh, we can get his take on it because this thing is, it's pretty neat actually. Yeah, I think as far as half-ton trucks go, I'm really not a fan of the styling of anything in that segment right now too, too much. The Tacoma mm. is probably my favorite if I had to pick one. Right. Um, this actually might be my favorite looking of all the new ones, to be honest. Like, I think as far as the smaller trucks go, it's it's pretty sharp looking. Um, the Frontier especially was just so infamous for being 2004 was its last major redesign. So yeah. like, you know, you're talking about 17 year old truck pretty much. So it's nice to see this thing go from that old all the way straight to, you know, new interior, larger interior screens, the newer Nissan switch gear. Um, now I'm not the biggest fan of Nissan to begin with, um, mm. but <laughs> uh, particularly in their larger and more like passenger vehicle variations, but um, comparative to the old Frontier, especially, I think this is like a huge step up for sure. Yeah, Lucas, do you have anything to say to that? Nice looking uh, pickup, I guess. I don't know. Uh, I still see the old Nissan Frontier in it. Still kind of basic looking. I guess they have yeah, a nice interior now. Yeah, I was about to say it kind of looks cheap. Yeah, the interior definitely does look a, is definitely weak on on Nissan. So it looks like they spent a lot of money on the exterior and just yeah. sort of cheaped out on the interior. It's a common theme with Nissan uh, if you look at their sort stuff. Of the thing to where the pl like the plastic trims you know like these orange the little patterns of yeah. orange and things like that yeah. where they're like look how sporty we are but it, it's yeah. clearly just that cheap plastic they just spray one color You're and i feel like it's anybody. one of those yeah and i feel like it's <laughs> one say of those no gtr can... calm down <laughs> <laughs> exactly and uh i feel like you can almost see it where it's like i feel like six years from now half that orange flake is just gonna be chipped to flat black oh, yeah. and you know it's just gonna fall apart over time so now see like, if they the want to compete with up. ford and dodge they need they need to take this pickup slap a gtr motor in it all right have freaking 700 horse uh, horsepower to the wheel and then then we're talking nissan then we're talking all right people are gonna want the frontier but no i'll take a ridge line over this <laughs> you know what i think you're right on that front yeah <laughs> Yeah, oh. it's uh, definitely no GTR engine, I believe. Uh, yeah. It's carrying over the same newer motors from last year where the, they carried basically the old uh, Frontier body style for a year, but put in the newer engines, which was a new 3.8 liter V6 tied to a nine-speed automatic coming from their old four liter VQ40 and uh, five-speed auto gearbox. So definitely a newer drivetrain, but yeah, a whopping 310 horsepower. So nothing really to, to see there. It's going to be uh, pretty average for the segment. Yeah, um, I mean, we're you're kind of just putting makeup on a, on a pig, really, if you think about it, because it's yeah, just yeah. it's just the same truck with the same running gear and it's like a body just... kit they threw on. Exactly, exactly. Just the yeah, last, little, last body year kit. gave it the major drivetrain redesign. This is definitely the year for the major the major interior rework Facelift. and stuff, and and it's still definitely not uh, you know it's not like this some segra defi segment defining like this is now by far the best compact truck. It yeah. really is just like basically it brought them up to competition at best. Um, they still don't really have that many options compared to someone like GM that at least offers you know the Z71 packages, the diesel options. They're at least differentiating the market a little bit more than something. GM like oversaturates this where... their market, so I mean, let's be honest here. I mean, they That's oversaturate true. the market too. Yeah. Yeah. They do enjoy doing that. Yeah. With their, yep. their 17 different SUVs they're now building. Um, 
but uh yeah it'll be uh i'll be interested to see it's time like these where i miss you know um days for working for enterprise where the old frontiers made for great burnout trucks so i'm kind of <laughs> just disappointed i won't get to see how this thing uh does the rose <laughs> tires, but uh maybe one of these days if i ever maybe go back one to that company days. i if, bet you this would be don't. a fun little burnout truck oh yeah if anyone for the company ever actually watched these videos i would never do a burnout in a company no. vehicle no, of course never. not he's never a really safe guy a real safe driver yeah I've, I've, I've been with them in cars before. Real no tickets, never damaged, never damaged nope. a car in my five years with the company. So I'll just leave it at that. And, or my uh, one year with my current company. <laughs> and speaking of <laughs> Nissan, <laughs> speaking of Nissan, let's go to the Nissan Pathfinder. Now you have a personal connection to this vehicle as your father uh, owns a 2014. Is it Nissan Pathfinder? Yeah, I always, I believe it's a 14. He never really seems to know. I feel like he gives me 13 or 14 is a different <laughs> answer every time I ask. But uh, yeah, I think I've talked about it a few times what on this dad channel. Move. The, the Pathfinder that won't die. Um, mm-hmm. the, the early year of the, the last generation, um, so colloquially known by Motor Trend as the Nissan Mall Finder, one of my yep. favorite nicknames for a car. <laughs> um, yeah, he, uh, he had weirdly good luck with it. They're pretty infamous for having, um, they're the first CVT Nissan built where they switched the um timing chain within the transmission for programming gears they changed it from plastic or like from a i should say a malleable like serpentine belt to an actual chain to try and make it stronger for towing um however nissan didn't know how to properly lubricate said chain so a lot of the early pathfinders are pretty infamous for the chains uh chain snapping and then uh usually grenades the tranny somehow my dad's has three hundred and fifteen thousand climbing now and has had no transmission issues um and has towed for 30,000 plus kilometers of its life. So I don't, I don't know how it survived, how it has, but it has somehow survived. Um, and yeah, this is the new one. Um, carrying over a lot more of the styling of, I think, the new Nissan Rogues. Uh, mm. You can see a little bit and a little bit more of the old Pathfinder styling where it's far more square compared to what it used to be in the last generation. Um, the real disappointment here to me is it's still carrying over the same uh, VQ35 DE. Not so it's still the old 350Z engine from like Not 2002 surprised. or whatever. Um, they've, you know, yes, Nissan will say they've updated it and they have technically with like spark and fueling systems, but it's the same engine code, the same block. And I was really hoping they would finally update to some sort of more modern engine. Um, so I'm a little disappointed to see that. I'm glad it switched to a nine-speed automatic now. It's not a CVT anymore, which to me, my biggest issue with any Nissan is it being a CVT. So mm-hmm. I'm quite happy to see that this is at least an actual, you know, transmission with gears. All CVTs um, are garbage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I can't say. I've been in better tuned CVTs, but there's no car with a CVT that I wouldn't rather it have an automatic. Yeah. So um yeah i'm quite happy to see this with the nine speed i don't know if it has anything to do with that new nine speed in the frontier we just talked about because it's the engines mounted transverse versus longitudinal so i don't know if nissan has two new nine speeds or what's going on there but uh yeah happy to see this thing finally get uh get a proper refresh for the first time and have they like put a pricing on now. this car yet nothing official i don't think i've seen i believe they've said roughly the same estimated starting prices so i would guess from what my dad paid for mine i would think with inflation now i think they were probably 55 canadian to get one fully loaded probably start in like the low to mid 30s i would guess so Hmm. price competitive for the class cheaper than like a durango or something but um, i'd like to see them come out with the old pathfinder body you know with all the upgraded kind of like the ford bronco if they revamped it up yeah i miss the days of yeah the old body on frame pathfinders the nissan xterras like the, yeah. when they did more like off-road heavy stuff now yeah. now the the armada oh, is really the closest thing all just your that. family us suvs now like basic. yeah yeah like this looks like a ford explorer to me just like yeah. do you see it yeah I see yeah it. it's a little uh it's if explore with nissan's like v motion yeah. grill basically it kind of yeah. not it kind of looks like a Range Rover. That picture right there kind of looks like a Range Rover. The newer ones, the Discoveries. Hmm. I see a bit those, of the uh, the Chevy those, Traverse as well with the tapering of the rear taillight. Yeah, I see. I see both of what you guys are talking about. I see, do see a tiny bit of Range Rover, and I definitely do see. I can see the Velar a little bit. In yeah, it. yeah, the Velar, yeah, the, the Range the Rover Velar. Velar. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It's the yeah. black the black top thing that everyone's yeah. doing on SUVs. Yeah. I must say, I do actually like. Uh, for a while, I was kind of mixed on that, but. It, it helps make them look a little smaller than they are in reality. <laughs> still too big for my liking. I'm, I'm going to keep buying wagons and coops, but you know. It's still pretty big. Yeah. Yeah. 
for, for a three row, it's interesting that it's actually smaller in a few dimensions than the last gen Pathfinder. The uh, with the third row down, I know I was looking up the cargo space is actually reduced from the last generation, whereas I feel like every SUV tends to get bigger. Um, and the Pathfinder was already lower, like smaller than a Subaru set, Volkswagen, Atlas, things like that. So I'm kind of surprised that they actually downsized it. If anything, I thought they would get larger, but mm-hmm. just got a little bit wider and uh, I think higher as well. So they kind of tried to go more to that off road stance, but surprised they reduced the interior space in it. Like it, like the nickname is it's, it's a mall finder. That's, that's what it is. It's all it really is. <laughs> Yeah, it's got that four-wheel drive shifter in the center console, but it's not really fooling anyone. No, who's it fooling? Who's it fooling? I wonder if it still lets you shift into two-wheel drive. That was always an interesting thing with my dad's is you could actually put lock it in front wheel, which was mostly just good because it could squeeze better fuel economy out of the thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But outside of that, it was kind of, I hated doing it because it would just make the thing fry the tires off every light. But yeah, Yeah. my dad just left it in two-wheel all the time because even though he doesn't pay for fuel, so I don't know the reasoning, but. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. I guess in other news, I guess we can sort of move on to uh, the Kia Sedona, which is now called the uh, the Kia Carnival, which is very interesting. An interesting little name change there. Um, they've changed the design as well, which looks okay from what I've seen. Yeah, uh, I don't know if we've just, yeah. I don't think we've discussed the, the new Kia minivan design. It's, uh, it's quite interesting. Every minivan is kind of going heavy on styling these days. Yeah. Um, the new Odyssey looks really crazy. The new Sienna looks like it's wide body from the factory, pretty much. So, um, it's, like it's definitely Lexus with that front end. Yeah, I it's see, got yeah. to it runs me a little of Genesis too with the the, yeah. aggra- the aggressive chrome stitching within the grill. Um, it's quite a bit of the the silhouette and chrome on the sides a little much, but mm. uh, it definitely uh, definitely looks sharper than uh, the last generation Sedona's, I guess, and stuff. Yeah. The taillights, for some reason, remind me of like an old 90s family minivan, like a Mercury or something. <laughs> the Previa? I don't know why, but I see a lot of old. The Previa? Yeah, maybe I'm seeing Previa back there. I see there. Previa I in the rear. Yeah, I'm seeing an old minivan in the back for sure. Yeah. Is that a two spoke steering wheel? Oh, uh, they did go no. with the two spoke. No. Or no, no, there's a three spoke. It's got the, the painted flat black Whoa, on the bottom they still. Got That's the good. seats facing each other. That's, That's cool. nice. Oh, you can That's spin the seats now, like the old uh, Captain's Swizzle Chairs. Grand Caravans. Yeah. Yeah. Captain's Chairs. Love that. Interesting. That's cool. With the center seat, and you can still flip them too. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That is pretty neat, actually. That's actually kind of interesting, yeah. I like that. Oh, and there's some child, like you can, oh, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> you can do it for a rear facing child seat, some of the pictures show. That would yeah. make sense. That one That's... almost looks like a racing child seat but <laughs> the ricaro ricaro child seat <laughs> i've seen they built those that, that that's the uh they exist the parent goals right there yeah they do actually oh me. my god Holy, look at that oh yeah every time i see these new minivans with the reclining second rows and like poofy headrests that wrap around your head i just picture like what's it like to be a kid now you know it's like there's yeah. like hdmi ports in the back of them i saw this uh i commented on this on my snapchat a couple days ago i was out delivering and i saw a i was sitting at a light beside a brand new denali and uh, i was watching they have like the, you know these giant 15 inch screens built into the back second rows now and it looks like almost 4k image quality and i'm watching these kids watch some brand new animated movie and i'm like damn you can just <laughs> plug like a playstation into this yeah. thing like this would be the best road trip car yeah. you know, like vegas or something you're not driving my God, because all the road trips for me were in the back of like a 2006 Honda CRV base car. So there's nothing back there. There's absolutely yeah. nothing. Lucas, you I had a lot uh, of time in the 08 Grand Caravans. And you had uh, your father had a uh, Yukon Denali, right? Yeah, he still does. Still does. Still does. Yeah. And he installed the uh, DVD player on the roof, right? Yeah, it's got, a, I think, a 12 inch hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty big uh, CD player. My God. And even that was super luxurious at the time. Like, yeah. my back God. Back in the day, yeah. I envied you for that car. I remember sitting in the back and you were like, hey, I want to show you the, the screen. And my God, that was so cool. That I remember pretty- when uh, when I was a kid, the, one of my friends had the same thing. It was, uh, it was a Ford Windstar, though. And it had the VCR <laughs> that t- dropped yeah. down from the ceiling. sold. It wasn't even a DVD player. It was for the VHS God. tapes. <laughs> Yeah, and I remember how cool I thought that was. Like, I'm like some you know shitty little five inch CRT or something screen probably built in the back of the van, like so bad. But I mean, compared to like, I think my dad was driving like a Chevy Astro back then or something with like crank oh, windows. So it's geez, that's so sick. fancy. That's awesome. Like the Astros are pretty awesome. Wow. I'd rock an oh, Astro I wanted... right now. Oh hell yeah! Safari yeah. edition, I'd rock that. Oh yeah, I wanted that. to do one as like an off road build for the yeah. longest time because yeah. they're like proper four wheel drives. So I always liked the idea just 
figuring out how to get lockers or something on it and just beat the crap out of one through because they're so cheap to get used to yeah you didn't have to do safeties here it'd be so much easier but hey it could be podcast van yeah true <laughs> Podcast I've heard of a van. podcast that does that where they just they just bought a broken van. That's car throttle. There. That's car throttle. Oh, do they do that too? Yeah, they did it as well. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Super cool. <laughs> Super cool. And uh, I guess I guess just uh, just as in other news, the Tesla has recalled. Uh, I believe it's their 2016 to 2018, or no, 2012 to 2018 Model S and Model X vehicles for their screens um well let's load up the article here ben yeah this one comes courtesy uh of motor trends as well as where i'd first seen it but a couple people sharing it auto trader jalopnik this week um so essentially it was discovered that a short lifespan um, with some of the flash memory will lead to screen failures locking users out of important systems is the nutshell um essentially the main issue with this with teslas as most people know they have no buttons in them so most cars will still have physical you know defroster knobs um shifters, things like that. Uh, and the big thing with Tesla particularly is the backup camera and the defroster. Cause I guess the way that the uh, national highway um, safety authority or whatever requires vehicles to always have capable defrost uh, regardless of a malfunction to the car. So mm-hmm. the fact that the screen can burn out and enables you from defrosting your windshield, I guess it's enough that it eff- effectively makes these recalled, which great news for Tesla owners. Cause any of people that own these that are outside of the warranty, I think it's like $8,000 or something to get a Jeez. screen replacement. And uh, Tesla's like openly said that the estimated life of these screens is five to seven years at the most. Um, whereas most automakers, they put in what's called automotive grade display. So they're supposed to be good for, I think it's like minimum 10, but usually 15 to 30 years. Uh, whereas Tesla screens are considered industrial screens, which are actually only designed to last three years on average. Oh, God. So uh, Tesla continuing to undercut and save money by using things that they consider it's so funny because the classic tesla when elon was asked about this he went on something about how these screens are used on like rocket ships and then all these auto engineers are explaining they're like yeah but car screens it's not like the force they're put through it's the frequency that they're used where it's like that screen gets tapped five hundred thousand times so it's like you have to be yeah. designed for long-term durability which tesla just didn't build them that way um unsurprisingly because they always like to find ways to save money it seems but uh, oh yeah but yeah so can't say i'm too surprised to see this one ironically timed after uh a bit of the bashing of tesla the last couple weeks that's last right couple episodes, but. yep that's right last week we spent a decent chunk of time uh bashing tesla i'll I'll, uh, I'll upload a separate video later uh just sort of discussing um or actually showing off our rant um i believe we did a tesla rant in a separate video as well last week uh so it was it was kind of funny um i had a fun time putting that together but uh lucas what do you think of tesla it's a cool concept like electric cars i don't know it's like the first of its kind so you know they're they kind of decide what they get to do with all this electric car all the technology and all that so far looks like they're taking over the market they're getting cheaper more reliable so have to see (laughs) who knows what's going to happen in a couple of years and yeah yeah, yeah it they just... seemed go ahead oh i was just gonna say uh they seem to have the advantage of being the early market disruptor for sure um yeah. having that leg up to be kind of the brand that even though there's so many other ele- smaller electric cars now that don't sell in huge numbers uh in even bigger number ones now you've got like the e-trons and the, the tycon and um Oh, I'm drawing a blank on another one of the newer electric ones that came out. Oh, the iPace Jaguar. Yeah. So you've got quite a few now um, under kind of the electric category, but Tesla's just done such a good job of being known as the electric brand, um, which I think will continue to help them down the line, especially as gas cars start to go away um, for getting kind of like brand clout or whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's also a company like that Tesla, like it's a car company, but their like warranties and stuff like that is completely different from your normal mm-hmm. like you want to work on your car take it to mechanic no problem and tesla go go to a car to change your tires you broke warranty like what's that come on like okay in california this car's no problem you don't need to go change your tires every what six months or whatever but here in canada you're changing your tires a lot right yeah and it's kind of a pain if you lose your warranty because you want to go change your tires like it's kind of stupid if you ask me it yeah, is. Teslas and a lot of new electric vehicles in general are getting pretty strict as far as maintenance routines and just about everything is about a dealer service at this point. And uh, 
especially for companies like Tesla that are smaller scale and are trying to move up progressively, yeah. it uh, can definitely make for some problems with, uh, with ownership, but at least they do seem to be getting more reliable. Um, as of late, their build quality issues are still there, but they don't seem to have the motor and screen failure issues that the early Model S has had. Uh, most early Model S's I see seem to be on their second or third engines and mm-hmm. second or third sets of batteries at this point. So, really, that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's a whole crazy thing. We we should, like we said before, we should definitely devote an episode to just bashing Tesla and you know just talking about it. I mean, there's a lot to talk about. We don't we don't necessarily have to bash them completely. But there's... yeah, there's a lot there's a lot to like about Tesla. Just like there's a lot yeah. of, a lot of problems with the company. They're definitely a mixed bag. Uh, as I think we said last week, you know, for every one good thing, Elon, you know, it's one step forward, two steps back. There with you Elon, go. Yeah, it's, they do one great creation and then one really questionable thing. You know, last week we saw the sub two seconds, zero to 60 times, which is absurd, but then also saw the car will choose what gear to be in because you don't need to choose park or reverse yourself. The car can figure that out. Oh, God. So, um, yeah, for every one thing he does, you know. <laughs> every one thing he does. Oh, my God. We, we'll definitely have to, we'll definitely revisit that for a separate episode of the podcast. But for now, here we are with a guest on the show, Lucas. Welcome. Yep, yep, um, yep. I guess I guess to start things off, I mean, we, we, we sort of discussed on our first episodes, just sort of discussing s- stuff about us. So I guess why don't you uh, share a little about uh, share a little bit about yourself there, bud? Well, um, I don't know. I'm Lucas. I like BMWs in specific, like if we're talking about cars. Uh, I don't I don't like you guys go into like these suvs or all keeping on top of all the latest car trends or whatever i'm more of the classic taking old car you know souping them up the tune the tuner lifestyle you know <laughs> yeah kind of more in like the aftermarket side of things yeah the aftermarket um you know kind of not reusing reducing recycling you know taking the old cars that i'll take your uh old corvette you don't want no more i'll take that no problem <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny for as for as up on modern cars as as I know I I try and stay to be and like as this podcast yeah, yeah kind of does cover with new vehicles. I I think the newest car I've owned is like 2007, where I don't think I'd ever really <laughs> buy a new car unless yeah. if I was sitting on enough money I would do it. But you know, a new car is going to go with like 75 cars from the 90s, where it's like yeah. there's yeah. Uh, there's so many classics that I think are, are it really just kind it of just makes so much sense. Why spend 50k on one car when you can take that 50k and buy 10 cars yeah <laughs> like yeah. come on <laughs> and there's a whole there's a, a large discussion to be had too in general and i think uh jeremy we could probably do a whole other episode on this too but the uh tyler hoover uh of hoover's garage always talks about this but the concept of uh new cars kind of being designed as throwaway models now yes. um, and yes and tesla's a great example of that where not all companies are necessarily doing this i think there's still some exemptions like i think uh, especially muscle cars and more classical stuff, Hellcats, even like Supras and things like that, I think are going to be a little bit better for long-term longevity. Um, but you look at any performance luxury cars, you know, M2s, M3s, things like that now, yeah. so advanced with electrical systems and so many sensors and so many, every minor. You can't, you can't even work on your car no more. You got to take it to the shop to plug in a computer. Like, yeah, exactly. It's it's 15 different panels to remove. There's a custom computer system that can only be read by this scanner that yep. this company makes and you can't buy it privately. And Or the or system's can, locked. You touch it. Yeah. You got to go to dealership. They know you touched it. Yeah, they can see yeah. code erasement history and things like that. I know uh, Mark Sevens are big on that. I was watching a thread of someone that bought one used recently about that whole thing where dealer tried to claim yeah. they didn't know about a bunch of maintenance issues and he, he pulled the old Vagcom logs and was like, oh, really? Because it shows he hasn't been clearing codes on this for six months. <laughs> and like, you know, the car's lifetime codes are buried yeah. in there. So um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I think even into the early 2000s, if you buy from the right brand, there's still pretty some pretty uncomplicated cars out there. But luxury cars, especially, I think after about the mid two thousands, a lot of them started yeah, getting too like complicated. With BMW, I'm not a fan of the new BMWs, like especially the M2s. I know people, some of my friends are freaking like M2, the M4. Those are filler cars, if you ask me. They're not real yeah. M cars. Hey, you're talking M3, M5. That's it. That's all. All these M3 or M2, M5, M6, like M6. Worst. If you buy an M6, you're stupid. You're, you're wasting your money. Go I will say the else. old or like or not old old but like 13ish or so uh, M6 Grand Coupes that era of them the four door ones they made yeah, I thought yeah, were yeah. good looking I don't know if I'd ever really want to own one reliability yeah. or anything but that would have been a fun like 
four year lease to do when that car first came out if you're just someone that likes to light money on <laughs> yeah. fire and i think that's kind of how a lot of modern yeah. like m bmws are set up i always see um someone ripping around downtown london here in like a new m5 like all blacked out and stuff the and m5 it's one of those, I assume it's mint they're mint yeah I assume it's always when I see those ones that someone that's probably got these on lease where it's just yeah. the, there's the kind of cars that you just don't want to own outside of warranty. The one it, newer M that I'm kind of a fan on, fan of because I've got to ride in one is the the new M8. The M8 oh, Competition, yeah. those like things are those. a beast. It is Beautiful. a beast. Yeah, I got to drive in a Nardo cars. gray convertible with the white interior. I got to say that thing. Oh, nice. Mint. It's It was mint. And I love what BMW is coming out the factory with crackles and pops. Oh, yeah. Best that's idea the, ever. That's best one of the great ever. things with, with new cars in general, actually. Hyundai was doing that too with the Veloster Ns and Ford yes. with the Focus RS. Yeah. There's a lot of companies now that do factory bang and pop tunes, which yeah. was like never a thing five years ago. Yeah, that was all in the aftermarket. And now a bunch of automakers are doing it, which I actually, Porsche recently got in trouble for that because I guess a lot of their GT3 series cars, um, if you put them in a high enough performance mode the, the yeah they were, fuel they were dumping in it was breaking emissions <laughs> regulations because the amount of fuel they were dumping into the exhaust on backfire um which is kind of hilarious that they've like almost overdone it to the point that it's illegal which is kind of funny but uh yeah it's um it's funny actually speaking of the m2s i I'd made a note of just kind of trying to think of like my top three bmws so i knew it was a bmw the themed episode probably we'd be doing this week and uh i put in parentheses as like a fourth car i'm like if i had to buy if i had to buy a new bmw probably would just get an M2 or M8. That's like if I'm forced to get yeah. one of the newer ones where I'm, I don't tend to lean to any of the new models, but it's like if I'm stuck buying a new one, M8 is probably one of the only ones I would consider. Um, and the M2s I think are good, but like it, my biggest problem with the M2, if anything, is I think I'd just rather get an M1 or a 1M, I should say. Yeah. Personally, the old N54, it's like one of the only Bangle Air cars I really enjoy is the, uh, the 1Ms myself. So my one thing about BMW that everyone's bashing on bmw's for is the new grill the grills like oh yeah huge. that, that yeah. four series is, there's gonna be no more car left it's just gonna be grill it's gonna be all grill <laughs> <laughs> yeah i remember the early memes when those s7 when the x7s were coming out um and i was seeing like all those memes of like people putting up security gates and we're just yeah, <laughs> yeah. Grills BMW grills. <laughs> yeah i see someone take the off the the new uh x6s they took it off the new ones and threw it on an e30 it was like taller oh, than like the, the ether. Whole, yeah, it's like oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that one too. <laughs> yeah, it's oh. ridiculous the uh, the size of them now. Yeah. And then you look at that new four series with the really strange looking. Everyone's been calling it my my Facebook thread like the Hitler stash or whatever. It's yeah, like yeah I saw picture. that. I saw that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would uh, I'd have to agree with both of you guys with uh, the M8 stuff. Beautiful car. I remember going to the auto show press day and actually seeing that car in person. Like, dude, this thing is yeah. absolutely mint. Like, amazing. I There's wanted one from the very series. beginning. Oh, yes. But uh, there it is. There's the Hitler stash car. It's, it's lovely plate that totally doesn't obstruct the ground. <laughs> uh, it kind of yeah. looks like an Alfa Romero right there. A little bit. Yeah, I can see that. That grill, though, is just disgusting. Disgusting. It's, it helps a little when you get the black on black and things where you hide it a little, but yeah. it, it really is problematic where it's, it's in the front plates just do not. And I think uh, Jeremy and me talked about this when they first premiered it, but the fact that they chose to put the orig original leaked images were like these ones where they chose to put the plate in the press photos where people yeah. were like, why didn't you at least Photoshop the plates out of the press pictures? Because <laughs> it doesn't help the front end at all. I don't know if they're trying to hide the grill or what, but. It definitely helps a little by doing like the black accents and stuff, but it's still so ugly compared it to the black. It is so gen. ugly. For yeah. the meme, I'd buy one of these, so paint it yellow, and paint the grills white and have it a SpongeBob wrap. Those, <laughs> like, bro, those are perfect for SpongeBob teeth. Like, come on. Uh, it's oh. a real shame, too, because the back actually looks kind of decent. Yeah, it looks like decent. It the rear. Yeah. So that, that front end just really ruins it. Mm. But see, they're doing that plastic stuff, too. Like, I, I hate how they do that. Just you have this nice car with the nice paint and they throw that matte plastic there. Like, oh, yeah, at the bottom. I feel like they're yeah, cheaping out there. Carbon, it's it's yeah. kind of better if it would just be painted. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, the 8 Series was definitely one of their their better looking recent ones, though. Uh, I know we were both taking quite a bit of a look at them at the the old auto show, I think, if I remember yeah. correctly, Jeremy, when we first seen, saw them. The Grand Coupes also look really good. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think in general, it's just such a beautiful... Yeah. so beautiful car. man and when we you never get the want competition mm -hmm. oh yeah brembo's you get the oh it's so nice the quad exhaust 
yeah it's definitely one of those cars i would never want to be paying that hundred and eighty thousand no. plus or whatever retail yeah. sticker on it but you know when these are five years old and they're selling for 60 because <laughs> bmws yeah. fall like a stone at that price point um <laughs> it's gonna be interesting to see them on the used market i think oh yeah be a part of that hoopty rescue project yeah exactly <laughs> little little tyler hoover reference right there <laughs> oh yeah i guess um do we want to go into i guess a little bit of uh i guess kind of your current uh bmws what you what you drive yourself there uh, lucas oh yes so i currently own many bmws uh my daily is my e46 it's the zhp package so basically it's a wanna be m3 but i didn't have i was gonna go buy an m3 but the pricing and the car wasn't a good decision so i got lucky and a zhp popped up so i bought that uh, i also drive a e30 and i have a car that I, I i can't tell you i'm not releasing any information about but i have another top car vehicle. top secret right. some summer 2020 or 2021 you're releasing hopefully bring it to h2oi oh, uh, nice. okay uh, i have another car it's not running it's it's one of those barn finds uh, it's a E E12, so an old five wow. series. Um, got that recently, and my possession got lucky with that one. Um, but yeah, BMW wow. from the start. I don't know, just kept going with it. And what, so have, what are, have all all you've owned over your life have been BMWs then, or? Uh, I've had an Audi, but the Audi was like a quick take it and sell it sort of <laughs> idea. Stopgap car, right? Yeah. yeah, it was like a buy, fix, and get rid of it. <laughs> it was a A4, so nothing special. Two thousand four A4. Ah, uh, okay. So okay. B4, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I hate the look of them. They're so like very basic. Like, yeah, it looks yeah. like a bubble. <laughs> Straight it does, up a bubble. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's just, yeah it's almost like one. a more rounded version of my mark four <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm thinking with that my this project car i want to bring it down because it's in out in ajax right now i want to bring it down here in toronto and i'm thinking of swapping a uh, e46 engine into it a lot of people have been doing it huh? oh, okay that's the in... that's an s series engine right if yeah I correctly yeah. uh yeah i'm gonna take the uh 2.5 one and throw it in uh, they're, they're, they're like, you go to any junkyard and get one for a couple hundred dollars and throw it in. Oh, nice. So it's pretty cheap. The beauty of old BMWs can actually yeah, work yeah. on them on a budget, unlike Bangalera, yeah. like N54s Bangalera, and things. Bangalera, you're fucked with Bangalera cars. You, you can you go nowhere with those things. You are endless 800 money wheel on, on stock internals with the trade-off of putting three grand into tuning and leak maintenance every, like, four months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wow, this is this is nice. I didn't know about uh, the E12. Um, yeah, like I, I don't have it right. Now. I would love to work on it right now. It's just I got I it won't even move out the garage. The tires are so flat. Oh, I there's see. There's no point of even me trying to bring it down right now. I would have to get a trailer, and I have no room down here right now. Ah, uh, okay, that's right. Okay, yeah, because you've got the Toronto two parking. Yeah, I got a double garage, and they're both you know, filled up right now. It's good you have indoor parking at least for them. Yeah, yeah. It's always, always a nice savior. Pretty, uh, pretty mint. I get a lot of hate though right now because if it, there's a lot of like a decent amount of snow, I I rip the E30. So many people bash me. You, what are you driving this in the winter for? Taking down the valley? I go, buddy. I I drive my cars. I don't keep them in the garage and take them once a year to to a show or something. Yeah, yeah. They're not like, garage princesses. Yeah, right? yeah, they're not garage princesses exactly. <laughs> yeah, from what I saw, I uh, I believe uh, Jeremy showed me a little bit of the um, I think it was like your Instagram there. It's uh, the E thirty definitely isn't. It's not like it's a, a show car or something that's nah. like got delivery mileage on it. So yeah, but uh, I imagine that would actually be a pretty fun winter car. I, I actually, ironically enough, I just delivered to someone a couple of weeks ago that I had uh, two. They were winter driving two different BMWs. They had an E thirty nine M five and a uh, an old that's my dream car right there covered in snow and, and like spray up on on the side of them so i'm like oh damn both these are getting driven through the winter so yeah i can screen share a video i have oh yeah yeah for sure uh, yeah. go for it yeah any uh any bmw content you got there any photos of the the whips can you see this Yo, oh, yeah yep we got it yeah this is at one of our uh closed courses uh in mexico <laughs> uh ah, yes <laughs> during all too well oh yes <laughs> Yes, closed course, uh, closed course racing here. 
Always, always. Always. Only professional drivers. Yeah, only, only professional drivers. Kids. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you could confuse them for the Stig. Um. <laughs> I, ironically enough, uh, I, I was just watching a drift video of today, uh, someone street drifting, and uh, I appreciate it was like a very, it was a Florida based video and it was classic Florida man stuff where <laughs> a cop comes and finds them all street drifting in like an industrial park and comes up to them and basically says like, look, talk to the other guy already, not going to give you a hard time. We get a lot of complaints in this area. You just got to find another Mexico. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. literally what this cop said. You got to find another Mexico. Got to find another Mexico. Find another Mexico. He's like, you know, there's better Mexicos than this. Uh, it's a little too hot. Um, he's like, so just try to find another spot. And it starts with the guys. He gave him his license back. He's like, just so you know, if I see you around town in my STI, I'm going to spank you. <laughs> <laughs> he said that. Wow. Like, yeah. Uh, on video too. He's like throwing yeah. shade to these guys. I'm like, damn, that's like the best cop you could ever run into. <laughs> oh. Oh, dude. And so let, let's talk a little bit about mods on the C30. So you told me earlier, you've done some exhaust work on this thing. Yeah, so uh, nothing crazy done to it. Uh, pretty much stock. I got it running, but as soon as I got it, the next day didn't work off. So the transmission didn't want to go into gear. I don't know how this happened, but the pedal, the whole pedal assembly, the clutch pedals brace snapped. The metal brace snapped. Oh. But every time I was pressing on it, I was just increasing the crack. It took me two years to figure it out, but it's oh. now running. So, but no, besides that, has a so you can't tune these cars you actually got to chip them so it's got a little mm. uh, ecu to uh, chip in it doesn't do too many to give it too much power just a little kick in it uh it's got some headers and then full two inch straight pipe to a muffler sounds pretty nasty <laughs> it does yeah you blasted by my house uh just the other day that thing sounds amazing there were people shoveling the, their fronts i could tell my neighbors were pissed oh yeah <laughs> my that neighbor if you're my neighbor you hate me coming back at like 12 and 12 at night just ripping it in the snow <laughs> every oh. corner you have just send it <laughs> just send it yeah, go I'm full send sure or no send we're, we're probably quite happy that i got that my speed got totaled out because uh i know uh they were not i, I imagine not the fondest of me last year at four at, when i was working my summer shifts and was starting my car at 4 30 in the morning to go to work <laughs> just uh screaming on the street just cold starting that thing wow i think it was loud <laughs> that and the backfire on every throttle lift didn't really help but <laughs> yeah yeah Nothing so like a good straight pipe. all right so tell us a little bit about oh goodness what, what else are you going to show us oh what do you want to see you want to see yeah, i got so many videos <laughs> oh, i'm cool i'm cool with anything really can you guys hear the video uh, there is a way to turn on sound um, under probably on my screen end. sharing options. Yeah, there's yeah. something wherever your screen sharing settings are that will let you specifically activate sound. I know it's an additional thing you have to click. Mm. I've seen this video before, and I oh. know exactly where this Mexico <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't see anything. It says pause. Those good old Mexican streetcar tracks, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You gotta love those tracks. <laughs> you gotta love those Mexican streetcar tracks. I want to <laughs> slam this thing so bad, but to do coilovers on these cars, you actually have to weld your coilovers to your knuckles, and oh. I do not want to do that. So I will be photoshopping all my E30 pictures to make it look. Like <laughs> oh yes, I figured. <laughs> Good fitment, Photoshop that job. Fitment. Reminds me actually a little bit of off to see if I can dig it up. I've got a I've got a friend in the Mercedes community that's got a build that reminds me of Oh the uh, Melbourne guy? Pardon, sorry? The Melbourne guy, he's got his uh, uh old Mercedes wrapped like a uh, pack of uh cigarettes. No, I uh, oh I do actually know the one you're talking about, but uh yeah. not the car I was I was thinking of. No, but I, I'm going with the rally version with this car because I gave up on the slam version. Going to go full rally with this car? Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to get that headpiece for the hood. Mm -hmm. Kind of kind of pricey. <laughs> mm, yeah. That is nice, though, that what you did with the – is that a custom front valet? Excuse me, front valance? No, that is – so my dad actually picked it up because my dad loves the E30. He, he was the one who was like, yo, you should get this car. I'm like, yeah, okay, maybe. Huh? And then I ended up buying it, but – it's off a it's a original BMW piece it's called a cow catcher. Nice. Oh, okay. this thing was I don't know. We paid it a ridiculous price for it, and it was in such a bad condition, and I had to fix it up. But it makes the car look so much better because it came stock with these dot. They're called diving boards. The old chrome bumpers that stick out like four mm -hmm. inches. Yeah, it looks disgusting. 
So then when you add this on it, it kind of gives it that more like closed front square boxy. Yeah. Yeah, that brings it, I feel like, from the 70s, 80s styling. Up yeah, to yeah, the 80s styling, sure. yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah, the rear end on this. Taking a look at your daily. Here we go, yes. Oh, yeah. More Mexico. <laughs> this, is, this is actually a sick <laughs> place to take pictures, right on the uh, CN Tower, right by the uh, airport. Oh, yeah, Billy uh, Bishop, right by. Yeah. Oh, shit, I didn't mean to. Um... Mexico. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Yeah. But... <laughs> Just parking. Nothing incriminating. Going Another on. video from Mexico. Oh, this oh, is yes. a Mexico one. Yeah. Okay. This is a Mexico one. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. I'm not familiar with that Mexico, but I think I get a sense. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, today I picked up some uh, coilovers for the car. Nice. Some rear camber uh, control arm, so it's gonna be slammed probably Saturday. It's pretty. Nice. I can't slam it like I want to slam it because of my tire and fitment. But in the summertime, I'll I'll get some better tires. But my sidewalls are way too big to mm. <laughs> slam. Mm. Slam it. You right just now. Stre stretch out a little bit. Yeah, I gotta do a little stretching. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that is nice though. I mean, you got some nice builds there. I mean. Uh, and uh, we we can't wait to hear about the secret build that uh, oh, you're yeah. not talking about. You're not talking about yet. Um, Hopefully, come yeah, this sure. summer. <laughs> yeah, once uh, you know, maybe I have to have to try to have you on again or something once uh, once you bring out the new build. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to have you back on uh, back on the show. Premiere it. <laughs> premiere yeah, yeah, premiere yeah, the builds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to see about uh, update. Yep. I'll have to see yeah. about trying to hit one of these years. I got to go to H two O I. I keep my friends always go every year, and I I got to drag myself out to that one of these days. Well, maybe they had the one in. Up. Speaking of H two O, they since the borders were closed this year, they had the they one in the, Canada the saga. with Saga yeah. one. It was a blast, and they're doing it again this summer. And I'm 100 percent going. I don't care what these COVID rules are. You know, there was COVID this thing, but everyone was safe. Everyone followed the rules. We didn't break no law. Like they, on the news, like you can't. It was crazy because up that up over there, cops were like, uh, "Chill, relax, guys," because there's no cops. It's all OPP up there. They closed down the streets. No one was getting mad at us. And then I come back to Toronto. They got CP24. Oh, look at these illegal street racers. Like, it was not like that at all. It was all yeah, there's the there a lot of, uh, I, and I give credit, there was a couple news companies that were actually nice enough to do a couple other articles. But yeah, oh. they were bad for bashing people um, from that event pretty early on. I saw a couple later articles that were a little bit better about being unbiased where they actually interviewed some people that were like, you know, 99% of the people here didn't do anything wrong. You've just found like two videos online of the only yeah. people that did shitty stuff. And you're claiming that that's like all drivers. Um, even a couple of cops I saw actually come to people's defense that were like, no one was really yeah. being that sketchy there. I don't know what you guys are talking about. It, like, it was a real shame to see a R34 being towed away. Just oh, perfect yeah. show mint car, like all like down to the spec, big turbo, like all straight up fast and furious. So, you know, PP have them pulled over to the side and tow truck right behind. You're just like, oh, man, why? <laughs> My only hope with that, and I, di I didn't hear anything about them this year at least, so hopefully next year they're not there. But God, if MTO tried to do a checkpoint or anything on the way out there, like they could yeah. really get Apparently, something. Apparently, the last day they had MTO on the way in. So everyone was trying to take out, like, because the last day was like, everyone doesn't care. Everyone's doing whatever. Mexico. <laughs> Mexico. Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Mexico mode. <laughs> yeah, Mexico mode, but yeah. Mexico. <laughs> like, yeah, like you, uh... we were, we had an Airbnb, and our next door neighbor happened to be a tow truck driver. He said he loved it because it brought like they used to have this like way way back. He said they used to have a classic car show roll here every th every summer, and then they you know, so stop. He goes, this is bringing so much money for them. Like they'd love to have it again. Like this was awesome. Like there, everyone were like we were sitting on our front lawns. The locals were sitting on the front lawns, just watching people rip it just down the block like constantly. We were sort of Version like the of, uh... the disturbers of the neighborhood we're on our front lawn telling people just to you know send it send it <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if i can find a picture of my car with we had like put like masking tape all on our cars h2o that's right yeah i saw that on instagram a while ago when it was uh when it was going on yeah you took your e40 right yeah i took the e46 i would have loved to take the uh e30 but i wasn't sure if it was gonna make it that far <laughs> mm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I yeah. definitely know a thing or two about that, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to try and uh, maybe if I end up building that uh, that Passat I've talked about earlier on some of our previous episodes, I'll end up uh, going out this year. I don't know. I keep feeling like I need to get a Volkswagen or some something German to get out there. 
Oh, there were so many Jetta boys out there. They were full sand too. They would you know, hold me down. I'm doing a burnout. <laughs> I got you. I mean, the diesels do roll spin in first easy. Just yeah, the sheer amount of torque. I could just smoke torque, people yeah, out. Yeah. Like, it's the straight pipe in. <laughs> Reminds uh, me, my friend really needs to get back to me about my exhaust measurements. Ah, uh, yes. I'm waiting forever to get my car. Yeah. Get so, done. <laughs> so uh, Lucas, do you have any? Do you have any stories from H two O I in Mexico? I would. Let me see. I know on my computer somewhere I have videos of like, like ultimate send. Like we full went, send. Yeah. So what happened was the last night. There was supposed to be because it was Sega's is like big circle around like a little river and then there's they have the beach front so we had a pretty decent spot on the beach pretty big house mm-hmm. Our, like like when I say fast and furious it was like your typical fast and furious driveway like every driveway was just modded yeah. cars and everything like that but the last night was the worst like they're like let's have a meet up all the cars come to the Walmart parking lot big parking lot. And then you have those one, two kids that are like, well, I'm just going to do a quick burnout. Does a quick burnout. Helicopter comes out. Whole OPP squad rolls in. The Walmart security comes out, kicking everybody out. So then night's over. So, like Everyone was just too spread out. But then uh, I don't know if you uh, know the group uh, Boosted True North. Uh, they're like a sort of underground street racing sort of. I don't know. They got. I know some of the True North groups, but yeah, not Boosted True North at least. Mm. They they uh, posted on a story. Yo, everyone come to our like. They were gonna do a takeover of their intersection. uh, Intersection, but as soon as they posted that online, OPP was at that intersection. But Mm. everyone still pulled up. So we were close enough to walk to that intersection, and we were like, let's just go see what's happening. So we saw this side street, right? And as a joke, every time a car drove by, right, they're all modded cars drive, like driving by. We're like, yo, do a burnout, do a burnout. And me and my crew were like, yo, we'll hold you down and do a burnout. This one Jetta was like, yo, hold me down, right? And then <laughs> his boy in the passenger took out, gave us a water bottle. So he put like water in his front tires and we were holding him down. And he starts doing a burnout and the cops are like not even 20 feet away. And they don't, they don't care. They're like, whatever. <laughs> so then we just got the whole, like the whole street was like hot spot for sending it. It was like nonstop from... 10 p.m. to 1 o'clock of holding down cars and just doing burnouts, like pickup trucks, just doing burnouts. It was all fun and games until one of my buddies, local buddies, he, he drove up that night and he's got a full, he's got an E46 wide body, like full, your drift hoopty car, right? Like did yeah. not care what happened to this car. He's a full sender, right? She's like, yo, clear the crowd. I'll do some uh, uh, donuts, right? So does this typical donuts. Five minutes later, fire truck ambulance police helicopter those oh. cp24 videos of the helicopter night vision that was us <laughs> that was oh. him doing the burnouts but he, yeah i remember those sad. yeah, yeah. He got his car impounded like it was weird how his car got impounded because cops came in everyone just started running right but they seen his car it was parked on the shoulder because there's no like parking spots it's like road then grass so he's parked on the grass cops was like yo whose car is this and we're like the guy was like, oh, I, my buddy was like, oh, I don't know. It was just parked here, right? And it was kind of a bummy move by the OPP officer just to open up the car door and just go right in. So he, like, went into my buddy's car, took out his phone and wallet. And he was like, all right, where's this guy? And he's like, oh, you're right here. So come over here. But he just mm-hmm. had to pay the impound fees, and that's it. Got his car back oh. after a week. But, yeah. Let me see if I can find those videos. Those were uh, pretty interesting. Yeah. That'd be yeah, pretty it neat. sounds pretty pretty hectic for sure. It does, yeah. <laughs> Always is with the the H two O stuff. It's uh, it didn't seem like it was at least as bad as like Maryland gets. Like yeah, the Ocean oh, City yeah. gets ridiculous. Like, oh, yeah. really they get rowdy. They, 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 they get rowdy. Yeah. And it's it's a funny Ocean City is really interesting to me because I I feel like each year the cops get stricter, the people get worse. Where it's like if I feel like if the cops just like let off, this never would have been a problem in the first place. But. Mm-hmm. It's like people's like determination is completely driven by feeling like they're being unfairly targeted. So it's like, but the police continuously trying to stop it is just making it worse. But yeah. Yeah. It kind of encourages bad behavior. I mean, you know, the more you enforce, the more people are going to go crazy and have, you know, just, yeah. Speaking of uh, H2O, this is one of my buddies builds that I know is uh, going up last couple years. It's an old, W201 190E, except it was SR20 swapped. So the, it had an S13 drivetrain underneath it, essentially. I think it was nice. CDO9 with wow. the, uh, SR20. Um, Rocking the yeah, new plates, which are terrible. 
yeah it was temporarily this is uh ah. this is the new build actually it's got going on it's there but uh i'm a fan yeah, of this the was new one plates. of the you're a fan of the new plates i'm a fan of them is it uh because like the they're ineffective that... or i was gonna say i like the idea you can't get spotted on like the floor oh, exactly. that's cool exactly. okay it's pre- they're hard to read they are super hard to read yeah yeah, I've I've been behind them at, at night, and it's like, oh my god, I re- I literally can't see what this plate <laughs> yeah. says, and I'm like ten seven feet from it. Yeah, this is what he's building now, but uh, that looks awesome. Wow, I have a I have a couple friends that did the the H two O stuff last couple of years. Actually, his old E forty six is in one of the early like crispy H two O videos, um, which I always find funny. Yeah, where I bet I can find a picture of it. Yeah, he used to have an E forty six. Actually, here it is. That uh, oh, CSL nice. that. Um, yeah, it was in a couple different. Uh, actually, I think that might be even in Ocean City. It looks like I can't tell, but uh, yeah, he used to do H two O every year, and yeah, uh, that car made it in a couple couple highlight videos. Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm there's not the SR20. Sure, if you guys know, but I have the videos, but they're sideways. You know how to rotate them? Uh, oh, like they're in uh, they're in portrait yeah, or whatever. Yeah, they're in portrait. I think if they're recorded in portrait, then they're fixed. At Are they recorded in portrait or? Yeah, that should be okay. Um, Hold on, let me I see think... if I can figure it out. Let's see. Oh, Lucas you know can what? Share a screen now. I was gonna make an H two O edit, but I never ended up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's it called? I gave up on it. It was too you much. You never got around to it. Nah. That's all right. But they're all they're all flipped here. <laughs> this is a pretty this was like the highlights of the uh <laughs> highlight reel of the uh h2o, my, uh, H2O experience uh, i wonder if you could see this can you see that oh yeah oh yeah that was my car Subi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is when it started getting rowdy oh, right like here party. Yeah. oh this wow car, oh the so the OPP officers, when like someone started doing browns, they would come out with full like LR machine guns. Like, yo, what are you guys doing? Like, like what oh are we gonna God. do? <laughs> like the officers are. Uh, yeah. Oh, this 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 car two step was insane. Like ear piercing, blow my ears off. Ooh, he kept that driving by. Me. He kept driving by, and I loved it. The VW Corrado, that is amazing. It's probably a VR6 then, if I had to guess. Uh, those happening? things always have good uh, two-step on them. Yeah, full send and over here. Full send on that GMC Sierra. Wow. Whoa. For those of you who can't see, I mean, it's just doing a burnout. That's what we mean by full send. Oh, there's a... Yeah, is that a this was the longest pickup the burnout I've video. ever seen. Oh, uh, can, you can do some good burnouts with the Cummins. That's for was sure. that a was that a Cummins or? Um... Yes, it was a Cummins. Okay, yeah. It was diesel too, and that thing, oh, it it was it was insane. <laughs> Berlin Classic uh, last year, there was a really good burnout with uh with the Cummins there that literally blew the back tires off. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this was like wagon. your typical day. At wow. Asia, like you'd see everything. CRV. CRV. I'm surprised to see a first gen CRV. A Pontiac vibe. Someone looks like they're doing it. <laughs> oh, this is. Uh, Was that oh, the donut? Really this is different. the uh, when the cops started pulling up. Yo. Wow. This was like the vibe, like at night, twenty four seven. It was always, it was amazing. Wow. Yeah, this is when I. This is when I can start to see the uh, the police presence probably would start being a thing. Yep. But like in this video, the cops are no no more than like you could see the cop lights. They're just sitting over there at the end of the street. They're not doing. Yeah, anything. just trying to keep the road cordoned off at this point, probably. Oh, here's your nice. Uh, I think it's an M2 or an M3. Nardo gray. Like an M3 maybe. Yeah. There That's it great. is. Wow. Nice yeah, thing. yeah, this was <laughs> if you couldn't enough not enough horsepower, <laughs> everyone would just hold you down. <laughs> I would have just done the old cheap reverse to first move. Nice smart. Move. What are we looking at? Another Cummins? Hellcat, maybe? 
SRT of some kind. <laughs> Jetta. Mark Four gang. Mark Four. Double dominant assign. I want to like show you like the crazy like whoa. Let's see if we can find it. I think at one point you had this on your Instagram story, right? Like some of this. Yeah, I had some of them. Is that a Mark IV Super there? Yeah, it is. Oh, there's so many nice cars. Like an NSX. Like, <sighs> oh, like, wow. Like you can ask for, like. Where's the. Probably saved it for the end because it was too cool to show in the beginning. Like this is it. Ooh. <laughs> Hyundai Veloster. <laughs> Here's your Hyundai boys. <laughs> oh, the KDM community. Oh, no. <laughs> Cops are there. I can see the presence. <laughs> Look at them go. Not bad burnout there for our front drive. That this is really good. Car. I posted. Oh, here we go. This is this. This is like your typical like Fast and Furious. Like oh, all right, not this guy. No one cares about his. Uh, yes. Was it BRZ? Yeah, BRZ. This is when stuff started to get hot. An R32 pulls up. I think. Yeah, that'd be. That's about right. Looks like it's got. Are those real blitzes too? Oh, they are. Yeah. Holy They're all from shit, Quebec. All these free. like senders were from Quebec. <laughs> wow. They're trying to get all the sending out because Quebec, yeah. I've heard, is like really bad for not letting you do shit. So they're trying to get all their fun having out other in Ontario. Can't get tracked. Wow. That thing is so well built too. Oh, that's this thing was too. fully Paints built. In really good shape. I wow. can eat off this. If they have real blitz 03s, that's, that's a proper build for sure. Because those, if those are legit blitzes, those are probably like an eight thousand dollars set of wheels. <sighs> this was your CP twenty four clip right here. Oh, mm -hmm. these videos are always fun too. Because whenever the public talks about them, they're always like, "Look how close yeah. this blank person was to getting hit." And I'm like, "You obviously don't know how often we take these videos because it's really not that hard to avoid the cars. <laughs> yeah, like, you don't really get hit if the driver and person both know what they're doing." <laughs> That was an amazing time, though. I'd do it again. I don't care oh, yeah. what people say. Yeah, I should make my way over to one of them just to just to say that I've actually done it because I've, I've actually never been to an H2OI or anything like that. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, Ben, have you been to something like that? None of the H2Os. I've done a couple... I've been to a couple London meets that have been shut down by cops for the same shit. Like, if burnout competitions start happening, some, some guy at the last uh, car meet I was at, I forget the name this one fell under but i know it was one of those was supposed to be properly done but then all the organizers left the meet at six but everyone stayed at the parking lot and then randomly a cargo van just started driving down the line with a hose out of the truck back of the van and we're just pouring water all over the street and we're like uh-oh <laughs> this shit's about to go down and sure enough people are just doing huge burnouts for the next hour or so until it didn't really help that we were half a kilometer from london's opp station so it didn't take that long for a cruiser to just eventually i don't even think it was coming for us it was just leaving the station to go onto the highway and just saw the burnout smoke and just like pulled out of the turn lane and came over into the parking lot but uh yeah i've been to a few things like that but never anything to the scale of something like h2o grid life is probably the craziest scale wise i've been to um, but it doesn't get rowdy quite the same way that uh, events like H2O do. Well, yeah. My summer was like all planned out. Like I was going to hit Berlin Classic. I was going to go to uh, Montreal for uh, what's that one? Uh, I forget what it's called. There's, they have the big one in Montreal and then H2O popped up. So then we were going to go oh, to yeah. Montreal. Is it Earth or whatever? No, I'm not sure what it was called. They have it every year, and it that's mm -hmm. like a professional event where you have to pay for a parking spot spot in the yeah, thing and bring your car. I'm and... forgetting the name, but I know the one you're talking about too. It's, I'll be right uh, back, yeah, guys. It's a pretty big one. Sounds good. Um, yeah, the one in Montreal is pretty big. I was I had the kind of the same plan. COVID really kind of fucked up car shows this yeah. year. Yeah, like that. Um, yeah, Berlin. I was going to do again, um, and then I was hoping to do H2O one of these years, and then that got 
turned into what it was. Uh, at least Canada represented something. Yeah. Um, Grid Life Five. This was my first year. I didn't go for the last six years. So. Is Grid Life been... like a uh, off-road um, sort of uh, show or? No, it's uh, actually more um, like uh, it's kind of interesting. It's um, it's like car festival cross. Uh, it's like part music festival part kind of car show it's uh the old description i think that dude in blue did a video on it but called it like and it's probably the most accurate description for the horizon in real life oh really um, that's pretty so cool it's kind of like there's concerts at night but then um drifting and like track racing during the day mm. there's a car show on like a beachfront that's like kind of offset from the racetrack and then there's like ten thousand people that camp there every year so it's like a blend of like day drinking watching drifters that's racing stuff. Sick. yeah and what I would say is kind of like the coolest part about it is the drifters are all super like humble guys. I don't know if you do you follow Formula Drifter, drift the drift culture kind of. Uh, no, I don't follow too many though. The all like the professional or uh, mm. whatever, all like those. I follow them, like the sort of like backyard drifters or like they go to like the open course, open track mm-hmm. days or whatever. Yeah, so I don't know if you're familiar then with any of like the. Uh, I'm trying to think of a few that usually go out. Von Gittin Jr., um, Ryan Turk. Um, Frederick Asbo, um, Chris Forsberg, people like that, but uh, Adam LZ and a bunch of guys, but they're all, uh, they all will go out to these events and then like, they're cool because at night, a lot of them will end up getting drunk with everyone. Like yeah. they'll just get drunk, hop on yeah. a golf cart and go play. Like I played beer pong at one party with like Forsberg and Turk at like 2.30 in the morning and they were on track at 9.30 the next day drifting where it's like, yeah, I don't know how you cool. guys are hustling and like getting drunk. It's like, at least we're just hung over and crawling out to watch you drive at like nine o'clock. These guys are actually out doing maintenance checks at eight o'clock, swapping transmissions after <laughs> being hammered the night before. It's uh, always impressive the amount of like sending they can do. Yeah, I don't know if you saw. I remember Doug Ford talking. They he was kind of shit talking us. But the there was a big car meet in Guelph in the summer, and then everyone got to Guelph. Oh yeah, uh, shut nice. down and yeah. we moved. I drove across Ontario. I had to drive all day to Hamilton. We got to Hamilton. We got just in time. Like my group got got into the parking lot as a cop said, "All right, no more cars allowed in at this big ass Cineplex." But I remember Doug, Doug Ford was like, oh, you all need to get your uh, brain checked, blah, 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 blah. That's not a real car show. I'm like, what are you talking about? There was, like, legit show cars there and all that, but, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. He, he was slamming you guys pretty hard. You know, I just, I don't understand. I guess it was, like, maybe just a power thing that kind of got yeah. to his head. I just think it's stupid. I mean, I understand where he's coming from when he's upset, but, like, come on. Like, don't, don't, don't yeah. slap him while we're down. I mean... We're trying to have a little bit of fun. I mean, I guess it's it's okay if we're you know respecting some of the rules, right? Yeah. So it's, it's bad when they they always general car community is brutal for getting generalized whenever something yeah. goes wrong. Where it's yeah. like they they lump every and classic car guys are always the first to be like like the old guys of like well it's not us it's these young people but it really isn't like any demographic yeah. of age it's just no. like certain people within any subs. I've met muscle guys that are idiots and do something they shouldn't. I've met like tuner guys, euro guy. Like it's really just you get the wrong three people, but then it ends up like it's the classic bad apple spoils the bunch. But kind of I thing. was surprised because. Because uh, what's called mob mentality, mob mentality was hosting this event, and they're they're a pretty big crew, right? And I'm surprised how fast they got shut down. And they had a lot of people coming out, like so we we took like like we were like the first group to move out from uh, Guelph, and we took like a side street. It was like this side highway all the way down to Hamilton, and we were at the front of the line. But I looked in my rear view mirror, and you just see a line of just cars just following you. It was like, pretty cool pretty cool sight to see just on this like side country road and then you kind of get those guys driving down the middle lane and those guys are people they were getting yelled at always the genesis guys yeah <laughs> the, the mercedes guys you know you <laughs> middle eastern guy in his brand new mercedes amg blasting it past you <laughs> <laughs> yeah the old e43s and things like that yeah, and, yeah the classic jerk like douchebag driver stereotype um, i've seen a subaru legacy like stock Subaru Legacy with like 32 inch mud just fully poked out just driving next to you. I was like, that guy sends it. Yeah, full send. <laughs> that, wow. Look like a monster um, truck with a mini body. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of earlier uh, grid life uh, conversation though, we were uh, away from the washroom there, Jeremy. I, I pulled up some of my classic photos from this old event, but uh, some of the kind of the crazier previa speaking mm. of uh, but some some weird modified stuff you'll see at these events um, wow 
couple like drift trains and things like that. Um, see how easily the uh, how freely my videos want to actually load. There we go. But, um, Standing on a Kia like Rio. Share. There it is. The Adam LZ. Yeah, LZ was out there uh, last year. He brought the uh, S his S13 and his uh, S15 Pro Car. We're both there on track. I think it sounds pretty ridiculous in person yeah. too. Like it's yeah. got that that beast off from the SR20, but uh, is that a legit uh, uh, Harlequin? Uh, yeah, he was. Oh shit. Yeah, they had a real one there. Had the had the numbers. Met. It's funny actually. It had a vanity plate that was like, "Yes, it's real." <laughs> that oh. was like literally the <laughs> Um, yeah, just a bunch like of really. Car. You always always see some interesting, different kind of crazy, a nice clean Mark, Mark three. Mark three. Yeah. Wow. I had like a three thousand GT or whatever. Nice. Um, Clean Ooh. S15, you know, some Look R32s. I want an S15. If I'm going to get a JDM drift build, S15. S15, clean, they're really clean. clean. Yeah. Ridiculous. <laughs> man. Wow. G30. Uh, GTR. Mark IV, Mark IV, Supra. That's very period correct. Yeah, it's like classic Fast Furious body kit. Really clean Mark IV Jetta. Oh, Mark IV, nice. Uh, Mark Whoa. IV wagon with the body, like the performance body kits. That on looks it. amazing. Are those Euro taillights? Yeah, it's got the Euro lights on it too, which love I'd love that. to do to mine if I wasn't so cheap. Ooh. Nice. Yeah, there's a lot of cool ones at the car show this year. Yeah, you can kind of see this is like where the car show's held so along the waterfront and things like that. But And everybody just nice camps outside thing. their cars or whatever. Yeah, uh, so yeah. the car show area, a lot of these guys will like have trailers just off site that they park at at night, or they just have the cars there for like a day or something. Some of them left the cars parked overnight if the weather was good. Um, but most of these guys have like trucks and trailers and stuff. Mm. But a lot of the guys that like grassroots guys are all just like regular camping with like tenting and stuff in their cars. Um, Ooh, Super B. Whoa. I know if I go to some of my uh, kind of less drift Ooh. content related footage, but. Uh, yeah, like back in the regular camping grounds, you see shit like this, you know, like Mark <laughs> Sixes in Pacific. That's a bunch of random yeah. stuff people are camping out in. Wow. It's like take your mom's SUV and soup it up. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, you see a nice mix of uh, different, uh, different drivers and stuff, though. But yeah, it's all like drifting and stuff by the day. Quite a few different pro guys that come out like falcon and everyone will always come out and yeah there's some of the concert videos because at night it's a lot more you know lively concert footage based stuff people partying like we're more rave style depends every year too because they rotate between hip-hop and electronic artists so sometimes it's more you know rave ask sometimes it's more just like old school hip-hop but i always got pretty cool at night you know people getting getting drunk getting people getting fucked drunk up, all that fun stuff yeah you can kind of see a nice tent stretch picture look here. at that the Subaru community what the set hell? of baja too we're excited ba there's a baja too yeah hiding behind that out back there that looks amazing i almost bought a baja but the Did guy you? was yeah he was selling it on market he was selling two for 7k and both had blown motors i was like do oh I buy this or do i not buy this a yellow they're both yellow too pretty nice Ooh. did it have the gray cladding at the bottom or was it all yellow uh, no, I had the gray cladding at the bottom. I think the gray cladding, nice. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't mind the gray cladding. It's, uh, it brings me back to a bygone era of, of uh, General Motors with the Pontiac those vibe because my dad had one. Uh, those things are worth a pretty penny now, too. The Bajas had such oh, a ridiculous yeah. Yeah. resale value. It's uh, it's unfortunate I can't share the really great great life video. If I uh, didn't want to copyright crispy stuff, I would share his after movie because it's uh, got some great footage of this. But there's this ridiculous rainstorm, and some of the videos <laughs> of pictures of cars trying to dig out of this mud. Holy <laughs> it's like oh. the worst looking because they'd have they have to get hitched out by trucks who would just do burnouts all over them and kick the mud up. Um, oh, whoa! Cool oh, is that for Ferrari? Like, yeah, yeah, that's that's, Ferrari uh, V8 in it. Yeah, Ryan Turks uh, calls it the GT the what's a gt486 or whatever but uh <laughs> yeah that's a 458 swapped engine in it which is cut awesome. the and everything you can see the collectors for the exhaust and stuff yeah the front front exit exhaust which is always kind of crazy looking the pro built endurance engine in forsberg's wow. old four-door drift car this is some photos Ooh. from i think uh 18 that is clean red life but um yeah there's a couple different uh 
God, I've got so many years of pictures all built up from this event at this point. But uh, oh, that was another cool one of the eight <laughs> ones. Um, Tanner Faust LS7 Tanner Faust, swaps yeah. with, oh, yes. with the eight to one collector for his headers. You can see like the wire, the plumbing for the headers going into the front on this one too. Pretty ridiculous looking. Drift taxi. Yeah, <laughs> good old drift taxi. Yeah, there's wow. some. Uh, there's always some cool cars every year, really, at this event. But uh, that a Mitsubishi yeah, Starion. It was a Starion. We were just looking at a. St- we, we scrolled by a Starion. Orange one. Oh yeah, this one here. In the oh, yeah. yeah. So eighties. I love it. Cheesy thing or something in it. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, there was. Uh, Always some different stuff at this event too. I find they don't really bring the same two cars out every year. Someone had like a modified Volvo, whatever these are, like the C30 or whatever, which I just yeah. never even see these cars. So there's a an there's a one. new Volvo gang rolling around because I've seen a bunch of modified the new Volvos like this all like slammed. Crazy really? Oh, exhaust. interesting. Oh, I'm, I gotta find these guys' Instagram page because some of them actually look pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, you don't the, see too many people messing with the Volvos either. The C30s are pretty damn cool. I was actually looking at a couple of them uh, just to see what they were price wise. They're 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 pretty good. They're they're not bad. Volvo in general is a pretty reliable car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, the newer they stick ones. Stick to the are, one, the one, the oh, single, that one motor. No, just. I think so. Like I'm pretty sure, like the SUV sedans, they all have the same motor, just so ones like turbo or something. Yeah, the uh, I know I've heard they're a little iffy if you get the the crazy T6 motors that are like turbo, charged, supercharged, and electric. Uh, mm-hmm. I've heard that the combo of them is a little bit iffy, but if you just get the turbo ones, I've heard they're actually pretty good. Like the less complicated ones, they uh, they last pretty long. I think even the turbo super ones aren't too bad. It's usually just once you add the electric powertrain and they start being funky, but <laughs> having weird tuning issues and software problems, but. Yeah, that's the life of, uh, I guess that's the life of most of the luxury car makers now. I mean, that's the track, you know, as we were saying earlier, BMW took the last decade or two, really, or whatever, ever since really the the Bengal era. And you started getting into the the failures of like the V10 M5s and yeah, you know, the real jokes of BMW maintenance started to come into play. I, I swear, like BMW's never had luck with their V10s. They've always blown up. <laughs> Their old seven series, that those were they kept blowing up. They still blow up. <laughs> yeah, there's the period their V12s weren't very good either. They were having valve guide issues and stuff for a while. And yeah, their old seven series straight piped. Oh, they sound amazing. They're so deep. Oh, I'd love. Yeah, I love those. the the '90s arrows of the seven series and stuff. Yeah. They're really. Uh, I know, like trying to. I was trying to think of like some of my favorite BMWs for this episode. And I know, like E39 M5s, I always want to go back to. But even the seven series of that era is like so good. Yeah, I was telling Jeremy about uh, there's a five uh, M5 for sale right now that's supercharged out in Oakville. It's going for ten ten and a half k. I'm like, there's something up with it. There's yeah. No way someone's selling an M5 supercharged which, for ten and a half. Era? E39. Oh wow, yeah, that's yeah. a ridiculous deal for any yeah, yeah. E39. Really, not to mention supercharged. Because my first good to be true there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, my first car was the 528 E39. Oh, nice. No, I, I missed that thing, but the trend was going, and I didn't tell the guy that, so he bought it still. <laughs> oh, the transmission was going? Oh, it was, it was slipping in first, for sure. Oh, no, because oh, I was cool. I was this close to buying it, because you had it on for a pretty good price. Yeah, I, it started at 4.5, and, and then I was like, okay. I, dro- I like, dropped it dr- dramatically once I saw my the car I have now for sale. I'm like, all right, it's going for two thousand. If I'll take anything now at this point, and as soon as I dropped it to two thousand, some guy called me the same day. They all come by it. Wow, that, that is so, quite yeah. the story. Wow, I kind of regret selling it because it was sort of a. It had the uh, BMW when they're individual cars on their um, right on the when you open the door. It sometimes says BMW. Mine said individual. Mine was like a apparently like a rare, not rare, but like. They didn't make. I guess it was rare. It was because it was the green on green. Like yeah. You don't see a green car with the green interior on those on E39s. It was either like yeah with the body color and then black or beige. Never the body colors color on the leather and everything. It was a pretty cool car, but that was a pretty cool car. Yeah, you did some pretty neat stuff with that thing. Yeah, you uh yeah. you put in the chrome the chrome headlights, uh, uh yeah. LED running lights, right? Yeah, I, I upgraded. Got some weird eBay lights for. Let me see if I can pull up some pictures. But I had the eBay lights. I lowered it. Put that's when I got the style fives for it, the BBSs. I threw on it. Uh, I did, of course I chopped the muffler off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it's like one of those mandatory things you gotta do with like you know with one of your cars yeah just chop that muffler right off <laughs> yeah that's the first thing i'm doing to the next car whenever i buy it regardless chop it right of what off. i going with it's getting at least the muffler cut the first week Fair of having move. the e46 I, I i i chopped it off i'm like i don't even care i'm just cutting it off it's too quiet <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wish there was a better exhaust shop in town that could do work the only good one in town that used to do work for people i knew uh doesn't do work for production car anymore like street cars they just do semi work now in large trucks so mm-hmm. kind of oh. sucks the only mm-hmm. really good uh, known exhaust shop here does like shady it's one of those classic shops where it got a lot of reputation because the owner was really good but then he hired yeah. a bunch of people that aren't very good so you yeah. basically get screwed unless you get lucky and the owner happens to be the one that's welding your car so. that's i don't know if you know the shop called hot rod scots they're like the sort of the big one in toronto oh yeah, yeah i think i heard of that before. one yeah so when i got my e39 done i got the good guys to do it when i went back to go get so i when i first got did the e39 i got my first my secondary resonator deleted and the muffler and he just put a nice like um nice tips and all that but then i went back to get my first resonator deleted and the the work the crap like like it was night and day like boogers compared to dimes like yeah yeah Oh, I'm very familiar with Hot Rod Scots. Yeah, I followed them on Instagram a while ago because yeah. they post on Instagram. And uh, did they did yeah. they do your car as well? Did they post your car? Uh, no, at the time, no. no. They they weren't that big at the, when I went to get my E39 done. They they didn't do uh, Instagram. They weren't that big yet. Now <laughs> I don't care. I'll go to any shop as long as they can weld in a pipe for me. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they've upped the price of their stuff now, but oh, uh, they're they they're they're ridiculous their pricing is ridiculous really oh man to to get like a two foot pipe just put in there asking already 350 i'm like are you what? serious guys like come Whoa. on it's too much yeah 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 i hate the, the that's brutal too when you get shops that just mark it up to the moon like that I, f- I forget the shop name but if you give him your hot rod squat quote he'll cut it in half and do it the way it's the exact same work for you really <laughs> he's out in uh, he's out in brampton i forget the guy's name and he does decent funny. work too really <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh man i'll have to keep that in mind because uh i definitely plan at some point on owning a three valve so yes uh three yeah. valve uh 4.6 i know you're not much of a ford guy but uh, those things sound pretty good that's when i first got it stock stock okay. wow look at that yeah love the green that is nice actually very five series very five series <laughs> Oh, here's the um, the the E12. That's when I took some pictures of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because did you post one on Instagram um, before? No, never. Yeah. This is really... Wow. We rolled it out, but yeah. yeah, it's in mint shape. The only downside is the rust. The trunk is rusting out, so I'm gonna need to re mm. weld in like the trunk floor and all that. But besides that, mint. That is really nice, actually. I do love that design of BMWs. I'd love to have one of those in so like, it's cocaine the white. Batmobile, they call it. Yeah, that's right. The Batmobiles. They the coupes they call the Batmobiles, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because you can get like an M series kit for it, but you know, of course, yeah, you're not going to do that. Yeah. You're not going to do that because that's just a little ricey there. <laughs> you're going to need a little, little side of rice for that thing. Yeah. If you decide to do that. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh yeah, that, that is a nice car, actually. Uh, I'd love to have one in uh, in white. That'd be a neat little ride there. Yeah, I don't know what'll be my first uh, foray into the, the BMW world. There's a couple different older ones that I wouldn't mind getting into, but the market just keeps going up, on the, especially any of the M-series stuff. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. trying to get my hands on any, like, 1M, E46, M3s, um, anything like Laguna Blue is, like, a nightmare to find anymore mm. for a reasonable price. It's, like, all the stuff that I really love in that segment has, like, gotten so collectible now. Did you yeah. hear the about the uh, Laguna Blue show car that wrecked on the 401? No, I didn't. No. A week before he was at a show I was at, I'm like, yo. And there's two of them, both lined up. He was the coilovered one, and the buddy beside him was the bagged one, right? And I took these sick pictures, like, sick M3 E46. I'm like, I'm like, this is like ideal M3 to have, right? And then next week on all the fi- uh, BMW forums, they're like, what a sad day in BMW history. He's like, car yeah. completely totaled. Completely oh, totaled. Like, oh. Oh, it, it was a nightmare just to see. Oh. 
Yeah, this is just before I sold the E39. Cleaned her up. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Those were those weren't they were they listing photos of the card that you uh... Yeah, they were the listing photos. Yeah. Yeah. I put the Al- I found an Alpina front lip on it. Everyone yeah. thought it was a real Alpina. They're like, is that a real Alpina? I'm like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah. <laughs> I'm like, I wish it was, but nah, it's not. That, that actually looks was, really nice. And it was a slush box. So I'm like, yeah, get rid of this thing. Yeah. No automatics here. No more of that. <laughs> that would be pretty cool if it was an auto or a stick shift, actually. A stick, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it's all that. green okay. and that that's super cool, man. Yeah. With the wood, too. Yeah. It's a nice yeah. classic uh, BMW look. <laughs> cleaned up pretty nice too actually it really did yeah, yeah you did a great well, job I, I, that, it came a long way like because i bought it before i had my license so i had the time to like do all the body because i did it all myself and then when i finally took it out like, having my g2 i'm like this is sick nice <laughs> <laughs> oh man i i envy you with that because that you, you've already you've basically got the dream that i would love to have like just a bunch of cars and the the projects at, uh ready at the ready for me yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. I know, I've been lucky. Yeah. I've been really lucky. Like, I, yeah, I, I need... Go ahead. You go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, I need to uh, get into that space again myself. I need to get the space that I can actually buy something I can work on again. I'm uh, getting trapped back down to having working cars right now, so... Yeah, but I was... Uh, like, when I was doing research for the E46, because I wanted... An, like, an, I wanted... I was going to get it. I was like, my next BMW... It's going to be an M series. Like, I don't care what it is. It's going to be an M3, M5. Like, I don't care. I was about to, like, finance an M3. So I went to go look. I don't know if you know the exotic dealer. They're, like, Diamond something. They're over there on Finch and Dufferin. Yeah, I think I've heard of that one. I walk in. What do I see? I see McLaren, Lamborghini, Rolls Royce. And then all the way back in the outside parking lot is a M3, right? I'm like, and and I thought it was a real, um, what was it? Not a CLS. I think it was a AC Snitzer. They on the, the listing it said ac snitzer m3 for sale right had the carbon hood the gtr carbon hood yeah like, that's that's awesome had the csl duct ducktail carbon fiber nice. trunk or lip. i'm like this is awesome the guy hands me the key it's like wrapped in electrical tape i'm like what the? like you kind of find a better you kind of replace this like when you're trying to sell a car mm-hmm. i started up check engine light i'm like all right bmw you know probably some stupid light went on but then when i went to go check the VIN for the car, I see Ontario. I'm like, what? The car's been revinned. Oh I no! I said the car's been <laughs> been stolen three times. It's oh been no! Rinsed, it's been revinned three times as well. I go, okay, buddy. Here's the keys. And they wanted thirteen thousand for the car. I was like, no way you're gonna get thirteen for this. No. I think the car's still up for sale right now too. Like, ridiculous, ridiculous. And they don't tell you that too from a, like, oh wow. <laughs> well that was a that was a good psa for all those people who are probably looking at that listing because oh, yeah no you you want nothing to do with uh stolen cars and uh yeah. leave-in cars yeah you don't know what you're registering or insurance and that shit's a nightmare so <laughs> okay open up the engine bay the vin was on like the wrong strut tower it was on this strut tower because i go where this vin's supposed to be they grinded it off i'm like all right buddy yeah. this Some is guy's like gonna go to do the safety red- he's like which of the seven vins on this car do you want me to use <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> it's like the door's got one vin the windshield's got another he's like which one do you want? <laughs> oh goodness <laughs> trade-offs of once cars have traded past through enough owners i guess <laughs> you never know what's going on with them you ever see the meme it's like first owner it's like a classic businessman with like a suit and tie and it's like fourth owner it's like a teenager with like face tattoos fully like slammed to the ground <laughs> that's <Yeah>. me <laughs> <laughs> well you're keeping these cars alive i mean you're doing a service to those cars yeah. right i mean you're basically doing what tyler hoover does with his cars have you heard of uh, tyler hoover for his uh yeah i think i know who you're talking about yeah yeah um you're basically doing what that what, what he does and i, I think that's great because i i also plan on doing a similar thing uh when i get older which is just own a bunch of not shit boxes but cars that can use some repair and you know fix them up and My have them buddy, around his day i know it's gonna make you jealous but uh he got got the chance to pick up a apparently it was an x i think it's a i don't know if it was a gt but it was a fully uh, car, not carbon. Uh, what's it called? That plastic material they make cars out of. Um, fiberglass. F- complete far fiberglass body kit, yellow Mustang, 
with a seven speed in it and it was like fully track ready and he picked it up for 7k and he ended up selling it for five because he could not figure out what was wrong with the transmission but it was a what? fully built car like it was just sitting in his driveway for like the whole like this summer and he uh, I, oh. I was disappointed he didn't get up he, he sold the car bought a wrecked car couldn't fix the wrecked car sold it and you know what he picked up he what? picked up an e90 i'm like out of all the bmws <laughs> an e90 buddy you're just asking for problems you're asking for trouble there yeah you're better off with the the 5.0 better off with the uh, 5.0 was it was it a it was an older one it was a, an older one but older one okay okay sure what it was okay yeah, I'm I'm mainly interested in the S one ninety sevens, the um these ones, but I'm mm. I'm down with the older ones too, like the Fox bodies and the He um... had a Fox body too, a convertible blue Fox body, but nice, well. nice. Yeah. Nice. My crew's got a, a assortment of cars. Mm-hmm. Got your German boys, your JDM boys, and the guys who drive anything. <laughs> Wanna talk a little bit more about the group, uh, without being specific? Yeah. Uh no, we're public. We're we're four one six hooligans. Okay. Uh right. yeah. There's a there's a decent amount of us in there. Mm-hmm. Um, I got there's the BMW boys. There's me and one other guy. We both have E46. Nice. Uh, you got the the owner has uh, had a uh, the big turbo uh, Mark IV, but he sold that. He's now uh ripping uh I think it's a Audi. I don't know some six series Audi. I'm not sure what it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, my friend just finished his B6. I want to say. It's the second manual B6 swapped in Canada, and I can't wait for him to bring it out. He just needs to get a starter, and you can start ripping it. That thing's nice. a beast. It is a beast. That thing, the oh, that thing's so fast when it was automatic. I can't wait for it to whip it out manual. But uh, yeah, one of my favorite cars in the group is uh, my buddy named Jacob. He mm-hmm. has a WRX that he uh, sort of he's a uh, pretending to be an sti so he's got all the sti body panels on there but it's a that's i'm a fan of the new wrx's they mm-hmm. are those are a nice car like he's got a 2015 i think i i kind of want one of those now after what he's done to his it's so nice they're those, far better for boltons than any of the earlier subarus especially for yeah. reliability they're it's the first engine i mean the fa series engine in general are kind of the first subaru engine in a while that doesn't yeah. explode on every turn which is a nice change like it, it's so <laughs> awesome you can just go what pay 900 dollars for a cob tuning and you've got an extra 100 horsepower all of a sudden like yeah yo, where's bmw's plug and stuff like that come on i'm, I'm sad that he can just yeah, I mean, I guess JB4 is like kind of the closest to that. Um, but the BMWs you have to touch to get that kind of tuning yeah. are usually pretty unreliable. Um, definitely the WRX is the first of the more recent Supers that you can actually depend on sort of to work. Uh, the Mark 7s are good for that too, where there's a lot of horsepower on the table from the factory. So it's yep. nice that you can squeeze uh, so much uh, out. And the WRX gives you nice low budget uh, all wheel drive too. Which is I don't great. know if you guys talked about the new BRZ and how everyone was disappointed it wasn't boosted. Yes, like, we did. <laughs> that, oh, I was so disappointed. Like, what, what's like, like 25, 50 more horsepower than stock, like, or than the previous year? Like, yeah, it's only like 20 ish horsepower or something. The big difference is the torque bump, but uh, even that, it's still going to be, <laughs> still. yeah, it's still not going to well, be. Well, now fast. they're competing it'll... with the Milwaukee torque again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll, uh, it'll maybe outdo the Miata now with that extra torque bump, but it definitely still needs. I'm, ho- I'm still holding out hope that they'll add a forced induction model. Yeah, that's what years people are line. saying. They're going to come out with like a... fingers crossed, but yeah. they said that about the last gen too, and we never got, mm. it, got it. So we'll see. I, uh, I don't hold my breath until I'll let the aftermarket keep figuring it out. But... Yeah. I mean, if you yeah. get a BRZ, they're pretty like it's like straightforward the uh, turbo them or whatever. Like, yeah, or it's even almost, yeah, the the Edelbrock supercharger kits were seemingly pretty reliable too. Yeah. It was a nice, easy way to get about three hundred wheel out of them, which isn't a bad horsepower number for a mid two thousand pound car. Um, yeah, they're not bad. They're pretty cheap in the used market now too. Especially, I mean, if you see it on the like, if you go on Facebook market and you see like a BRZ or an FRS, you know that some teen owned it before and yeah. he was drifting it and he lost his license or something now he's just trying to get rift because they're they're drift missiles they're perfect for drifting yeah it's the new it's the new s13 really it's like a two modern 240 it's the closest we have probably to it yeah the budget car we went through those parts at and just beats the shit out of it. yeah <laughs> I, I gotta say when they when you wide body it and do all like the like like aesthetic mods to it they look yeah. like they're they look like a nice car like yeah oh yeah they car. look the part. they hold aftermarket very well yeah yeah they do yeah 
they're <laughs> I was gonna say something that, that that would make no sense, but sure, why not? They're the Mustang of the JDM world. <laughs> they <kinda laughs> you are, can, actually, yeah. yeah where they they are. Yeah, because you can throw parts on Mustangs, aesthetic parts and stuff like that. And yeah, you can have one hell of a neat car. Just, you know. There's a guy in our neighborhood. I'm, I don't know if you've seen him, uh, Jeremy, but uh, he's got a, it's, a it's, it's almost like a darker Nardo gray BRZ. He's got yeah. a front mounted oil cooler and he's wide. I think it's a, uh, I forget wide body kit it is, but it's, it, it is so sexy looking. Yeah. He drove by me once. I'm like, yo, that's awesome. I think That's I may awesome. have seen him. Yeah, because that that thing is amazing. Yeah, yeah, that thing is. Oh. Have you seen the S13 in our neighborhood? Fully There's an S13 in our neighborhood. Full track build, rat like old, like uh, what's it called like old like JDM like from Japan rap. He just rips it around our neighborhood. Left no hand way. Dri- uh, right hand drive and everything. He lives right behind Howard. If you you know. In the- yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in Mexico. Um. <laughs> uh. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm. Uh, okay. I'll. I'll make sure to keep an eye out for that one because I've also seen. Um. We're, we're, I've also seen. Uh. Goodness. I think it was an R32. There's an R32. Yes. On by uh Parkdale. Yeah. Gray one. Gray one. Yep. I've seen that one everywhere. Also, if you drive up down, uh, I think he's parked out. He, I guess he dailies the car. It's uh, old uh, Mark II done up. Yeah. Gray one. Yeah. That's pretty sexy. I see it sometimes too. I'm like, yo, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty. Cool, interesting ones out there. Right? Yeah. There's right a by bunch your, of interesting features. Right by your house too, there's the guy with the uh, Sab. The red the, Sab. And he's the got Saab? the red. Yeah. And he's got, a, I think he's got the Porsche too. That same owner. Those pretty nice cars. The oh, older yeah. Porsche. Yeah. My yeah, yeah. I'm doing a lot better than my neighbor. I think the best I had really at my old place in Toronto was like my one neighbor's new 911 Turbo, and then uh, which was really only good for the backfires when it would come up to the stop <laughs> sign. I don't remember. Did I ever do that when you were at my place, Jeremy? Like every time I would roll up to the four-way stop beside my apartment, the uh, had like the ridiculous factory burble tunes. So always yeah, firing. Yeah, because we used to before. do um, recordings when before record this. Yeah. Uh, we used to hear that uh, Porsche come by. Yeah, um, it was like that, and then one of my neighbors down the road also got a Mark IV uh, TDI wagon. So we would always just like roll coal past each other. Roll coal past. Know the last time, <laughs> yeah, I know the last time I was out in my, uh, I was driving out to like leave town. I was going out to like the gardener, and he ran into me out of light, and just like we were just both flooring it off the lights and just clouding out everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had that happen where I'm like, man, it must really suck when both lanes have a smoking diesel in it because there's just nowhere you can go that doesn't have smoke at that point. The worst is when I'm driving on the highway and I start smelling. I'm like, is my car about to blow up? And then I'm like, oh, it's the diesel guy beside me. I'm like, diesel guy beside I'm you. Like, oh, I thought my car was about to blow up. <laughs> yeah, mine's brutal where it's like if it's covered in snow too where it can't ventilate and yeah. exhaust and then you like get in it after it's been heating up. I'm like, I'm like coughing a lung because all I can take, I can like taste the diesel in the air and I'm like, I like struggling to breathe. <laughs> you know what that e30 oh my god it like if you're like just sitting at the red light like i because i think i have a I small leak. oh you can smell the exhaust just like the catless exhaust oh yeah, yeah any catless so cars, you get that fuel it's smell. so I miss bad that with my speed it had like just the faintest amount of like gasoline smell all you're the like time. is my car about to blow up you're like oh no it's just the exhaust just just the exhaust, the exhaust. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because um my uh my uncle runs a uh, 1970 ford mustang and his car is an exhaust leak like crazy so when you're when you're driving around it smells like leaded fuel inside the car 24 yeah, 7 <laughs> i get headaches too i'm like oh man that's bad oh. the co2 yeah yeah i get, yeah, that. I get that from the diesel sometimes it's a double-edged sword with that yeah, yeah. it's like it's yeah, a nice smell but you also don't want to stick around in it too long yeah <laughs> <laughs> hey as long as you look cool driving your car it's all that matters yes all that matters <laughs> that is correct that is correct as long as, as, as it looks as good, good from the outside you're good <laughs> yeah Ah, oh, that is great. Well, um, thank you so much, Lucas, for joining us on the podcast. It's been two hours. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much for, for, for joining us. I, we don't want to keep you from doing what you were planning <laughs> on doing. Um, but thank you so much. You were the first guest ever on this podcast. So yeah, it's been a pleasure. I had a blast. We'll, we'll feature. Yeah, uh, we'll so feature. Much for coming. Yeah. And uh, we hope to uh, feature you again sometime, maybe when yeah. you reveal your secret, uh, <laughs> secret project car. Yes, um, yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, thanks again. Do you have anything you want to plug? Um, no, <laughs> I don't have to plug anything. I'm fine with that. Okay. All right. Thanks for having me. It was awesome. Yeah. 
no, not a problem, man. And we, we enjoyed having you here and uh, we hope to have you again um, because uh, you know, you got a lot of great stories and I'm yeah. sure you'll have plenty more. Cause there's going to be, there's bound to be another H2O. Oh alive. yeah. Oh yeah. For sure. Oh, maybe, yeah. maybe you'll come up with me. Who knows? If you don't have your Mustang I would love by to. then. Yeah, try and get the whole... Uh, if yeah, you don't have your, your, your Mustang by then, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you can, yeah, you can the, take the, the E30. I'll take the E46. I got both cars up there. <laughs> That's a smart idea. You know there what, you guys? It's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Um, if you want to check out Lucas, I'm sure you can find his name somewhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, otherwise, do you want to plug your uh, group or no? Uh, I can just plug my Instagram if you want. Sure, uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, plug your Instagram. Four one six dot l u c s. Find my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some That's great car content. You can see more of his stuff. Uh, more stuff from Mexico. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I guess otherwise, if you're looking for any more content with the podcast, you can follow us uh, at Gears and Grades on all the uh, on all the social medias there on Twitter, and uh, find us at uh, Gears and Grades on YouTube to keep watching episodes of this podcast. Um, you can follow me. I'm on Instagram at uh, Ben dot Bell nine seven, and on Twitter at Zoom underscore Till underscore Death. Where can people find you, Jeremy? Uh, they can all find me at Jeremy Honus. Pretty much, I, I my name is everywhere on the internet. So basically, you just search Jeremy Honus, you'll find me on Instagram, Facebook, probably Twitter, all the above. Uh, <laughs> and uh, stay tuned for the short videos that come shortly after the long ones. Thank you so much, guys. Take care. Thank you very much. All right, and we will stop the.